Hello once again, Big Green sports fans. Welcome in to Big Green Classic. I'm Brett Franklin. Glad to have you aboard as this evening we are taking a look back at men's soccer from 2016 as the 16th ranked Dartmouth Big Green hosts number 24 Seattle at Burnham Field in Hanover, New Hampshire. Good to have you along. And once again, Brett Franklin with you and uh, happy to have once again, our panel that will be uh, joining us and uh, a returnee to the panel. He is the head coach of Dartmouth men's soccer. He is Bo Oshani. Coach, how are you? We're doing well. We're doing real well. Thanks for, uh, you know, having me. Thanks for, uh, you know, doing this, uh, you know, again. It's, uh, it's great to see, uh, you know, Noah, you made Justin, uh, you know, again, to, to kind of go over this. It's going to be fun. Also joining us, class of 2019, wearing number seven, it's Yima Awesome. How are you, Yima? Hey, what up? I'm, I'm well. How, how are you doing? Doing well. Thanks so much for joining yeah. us. Also, no, for jo sure. also joining us, wearing number 14, class of 2019, it's Justin Donawa. How are you, Justin? I'm good. Thanks for having me. And also joining us is wearing number four, class of 2019. It's Noah Piravicini. How are you, Noah? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Doing well. Thanks so much for joining us, and uh, glad to have you aboard for Big Green Classic as we kick off a non-conference slate, a battle of top 25 teams going at it here early on in this season. The Big Green coming off a 2015 Ivy League championship the previous season, and uh, Yima, I'll start with you, and then we can kind of go through our panel, you know, uh, just talk a little bit about this uh, 2015 season, and, you know, you guys opened up with a tough slate against the University of Kentucky, a great game in front of a lot of people, and uh, mm -hmm. it was a tough start to the uh, to the season with an non-conference slate, including this one against to a top 25 team in Seattle. Yeah, no, for sure. I think the coaches did a really good job of making sure uh, our first couple of games were against really good opponents. Um and so to that end, I think same thing here, playing Seattle to kind of kick off the season was a really, really, really good game for us, you know, um, really good to just get out there and uh, play against like good competition and really test ourselves. But, um, but yeah, let's see how my touches are out. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely bodied. And what will be really fun about this, of course, we get some live react action from uh, from our panel who maybe haven't seen the film in quite some time but yeah uh, it's justin, been a minute. <laughs> but uh, uh justin uh your thoughts on that uh, 2016 start that non-conference slate and uh, really some top competition to start that year yeah like you said it was was tough competition to, to begin with but you always want want to start off you know playing playing some big dogs um and, and really test out what 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 we were made of. Um, I think we've always, you know, even the year prior to this, the year after, we always held our own, um, even facing top 25 um, opposition. So I, I think, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed as a player playing games like this, big games that really tested our ability. But at the end of the day, as as the other guys can probably attest to, I think we always held our own and, and, and put up a really good fight. Noah, same question to you. That uh, 2016 start to that year, again, coming off a great campaign the year before, it seemed like there were some good challenges to start that season. Yeah, there were. <clears throat> um, if, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, that was the season where we started out tying like five of our first seven games, which definitely shows that it was a tough schedule. But I feel like kind of once we got through that original tough slate of games, the rest of the season felt super easy for us. Like once we started flowing, once we started kicking, it was super easy after that beginning stretch. So I think we played like Seattle, UW, Kentucky, Xavier, a bunch of good teams. Yeah, first two games of that uh, season, uh, both uh, ended in 1-1 ties in uh, double overtime against uh, number 17, Kentucky, and then uh, at Xavier. And then, of course, you mentioned University of Washington was the game prior, and uh, that was, a uh, again, another matchup there, close game, 1-0. Uh, Noah, starting with you, um, again, you got this is your second home game of this season. Uh, mm -hmm. And, again, tough 1-0 game against uh, Washington the game uh, before. But you guys had to feel pretty good after that first two games, even though, you know, you didn't get the W. But, you know, you held your own there, like you said, against top-quality opponents. You guys had to feel good returning home at that point in time. Yeah, it was definitely – because, I mean – 
both of the sides were pretty solid. Xavier wasn't as good as we thought. We just got scored on, by the way. Um, <laughs> Xavier, I remember, wasn't as good as we thought they were going to be, but Kentucky was a really good test. And I think they were pretty frustrated having to play us because they didn't realize that we were actually going to be a decent side. I remember this. Like, Seattle walked all over us for the first, like, 10-ish minutes. <laughs> no worries. We bounced back. That's fine. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, it was definitely – those first two home games, it was good to come in with the confidence because, like, I was like, all right, cool. We just hung with, like, Kentucky in our first game of the season. That's awesome. And then the tough the, – the loss against UW felt tough because we didn't feel like we deserved to lose that game. I remember they kind of just had one chance in on goal and they ended up converting and then we just weren't able to score. Emo, we just uh, saw their Seattle uh, strikes first early on uh, in this uh, contest. Uh was there anything they were doing special that you can remember? Just kind of a, a break that just kind of got their bounce? How, yeah. how would you describe that first couple of minutes there? No, for sure. I, I just don't think we're fully in the game right there. Or, I, I just think we had a slow start, honestly. Uh, goal within the first five minutes is pretty tough. But, look, I uh, <laughs> I think we all know the result here, so it can't be, it can't be too, too mad about it. <laughs> but, um <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, – I, when do we – guys, we played Seattle, what, the year before that? At yeah. Seattle? Yeah. yeah. The year yeah, before yeah. that, right? And that was a so, – so we were familiar with the team, right? Um, what, in 2015 we tied – was it a 1-1 tie? No, they beat us 2-1. They beat us. It was a 2-1, true, 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 true. That was the when you scored the volley and then – Oh, yeah, and then Rick uh, with the red card. Red yeah, card. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I, I, was, I was lucky enough to watch that from, from Hanover. <laughs> <laughs> just what we needed that's right <laughs> yeah this was the second all-time meeting between uh, these two programs as uh, you guys just mentioned uh, the year prior uh it was a 2-1 win out in seattle so this was uh the second matchup uh between yeah. uh, these two uh between these two programs uh justin when you w- can you walk us through what that preseason was like, what it was going into camp and just kind of the feeling amongst the team again, coming off a successful year, the season prior, uh, just what was that general feeling going into camp and gearing up for that 2016 season from what you can recall? Uh, you know, yeah, obviously it's, it's been, a, been a while now, but generally speaking, going into every preseason, I, I think, you know, all the boys were very excited, obviously get back on campus and get back going um, in the fall. Obviously, we knew it was going to always be a graft, um, you know, the fitness and you know, get fit in general in, in, in order to, like you said, open up against against such good opponents that are, that have usually been in the top 25 or they're about. Um, so it was always tough, but we were always up to the task, I would say. And we were always excited to, to get on the field and, and play, you know, high, high quality opposition. So it was always good, good vibes around the team um, Good touch. and we were just looking to to, to, <laughs> to build off of um, you know the year prior um, and, 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 and do better and start, start off on a good note um, so it, it was always a good good feel getting back on the field with everyone at least from my point of view um, and, and getting good and so that's that's basically how it was pretty much every preseason not just this one um, obviously the, the magical three mile was the wasn't necessarily anything <laughs> any of us are really looking forward to. Um, but, you know, we got through it and, and we were always one of the fitter sides, if anything. Uh, we knew going into games that we were going to run more than, than most teams. So that, that was always the important. Coach Bo, um, you know, looking into, you know, from a coaching standpoint, I think we might have touched on this the last time we, we talked, but, you know, I think it's important here as we're watching a non-conference game, just from a head coaching perspective, your approach going into a non-conference slate. And uh, you yourself have uh, have proven, uh, you know, on your schedule, you, you, you love to play the tough teams as well. Just, you know, from a head coaching perspective, how you go into a non-conference slate and you go into a top 25 contest. Yeah, I, I think uh, as players, you know, all players want to play, you know, the, the best of the best, you know. And so, uh, you know, that hasn't changed, you know, from, uh, you know, 2016 until now. Uh, you know, we always want to try to, you know, schedule, you know, some of the t- top teams, uh, you know, in the in the country. I know, you know, these guys this senior year, we opened up with um, Notre Dame and Indiana, uh, you know, the first two matches of the game. And those are those two matches of the season. And those were, you know, two, uh, you know, tough, tough games 
games, you know, but it shows you, you know, kind of where you're at and, uh, you know, what you can need to continue to work on, uh, you know, so that you're prepared, you know, for uh, for the Ivy League, uh, you know, schedule and things. Uh, you know, last year, you know, we opened up at Wake Forest, uh, you know, when they were number one in the country, you know, and uh, same thing, you know, every time we play these teams, we're always able to, you know, hold our own and, uh, you know, battle and, uh, and things like that. And, um, you know, next year in 2021, ironically, we open up at Seattle and uh, University of Washington. So, you know, we're going to play these guys you know and that's going to be a fun uh, you know fun experience uh, you know for the guys I think that's the biggest thing is that uh, you know the Ivy League season is tough for sure but you know we want to give our guys uh, you know experiences uh, you know against some of the you know the best teams in the country and uh, Noah maybe you know again talking about uh, you know that preseason kind of that non-conference build you know just kind of from a player's perspective um, you know, what's kind of the mentality you go into in camp and just kind of what you expect out of, uh, you know, preseason and, and just from a player's perspective? What, what, what do you expect out of that when you go into camp and into non-conference play? Um, I think any player would tell you, at least from Dartmouth, that preseason is the best time of year. Because once you get through that fitness test, everybody just dreads that. Once you get that out of the way, then it's just pure fun because you're just playing like twice a day. It's sunny. It's warm. Everybody's yeah. happy. I think by the There's time no classes. Started, Oh my right. God. The the best. <laughs> so I think, I think, uh, everybody's super, and it's just like three weeks of just like pure footed. So everybody's super geared up and super pumped for those first few non-conference games. So I don't know. I think the, the headspace, the mentality is always really good and everybody's always buzzing for the games. And obviously a lot of times it's tough cause it's our first game while our opponents like their third, fourth game. But I don't know. We usually do a good job of hanging in regardless of, how quality the opponent are just because we're so pumped to play. Justin, the, yeah, go ahead, Yima. I'm just saying, it's good seeing some of the seven teams out here, like Manny, Jimbo, um, Marshy, Ricky. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the OG team. <laughs> the OG team, yeah, I cast a good, good crew here. <laughs> good save by James there. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> really good save. Look at Wyatt, man. Good that's, a good, that's a good Sorry. segue, Yima. You know, talk a little, yeah. little bit about that roster going into that season. You know, was that a was that a set roster coming in? Was there kind of some moving pieces? What what, what do you remember about that that 2016 roster and some of those some of yeah, those guys maybe. on that squad? For sure, I think obviously a super solid team. Like the one thing about that year is we we're all super close, um, super super close team. Uh, but it's deep. Like I think I'm, I'm in right now. Like you have Justin on the bench. You have like, who, who else is not starting right now? I think you have like a Greer on the bench. They're ton like pretty deep bench, right? Um, yeah, it's pretty deep bench. But I think like when I think, of, no, I think I like look. I think maybe the other guys can, can might might think differently. But I think this 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 team specifically was one one of my favorite years playing at Dartmouth. It's just like soccer side, just like a great group of guys to be able to be around day in day out. Such a fun year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think like the roster is super, super, I mean, super deep. I think like most years, the coaches do a good job of recruiting, like, making sure we have really good guys. Because what, this is the, what, 20s are freshmen Yeah. this year? Yeah. yeah. So like, be like Braden, Jesse, Zaki, uh, Baldwin. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, man. The ball by Wyatt. <laughs> no, you guys can talk. It's like not that big of a deal. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm in. Yeah, New York I would rather say my mom to be quality instead of just good save, good ball. Oh, this is no. This is a Dartmouth soccer thing with like Bo and Justin Noah. It's nothing. Yeah. Wait, oh, real quickly. I'm, 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 I'm with a bunch of other 18s in New York. Um, you can see them over there. Who is that? It's like Johnny, Wyatt, Matt. <laughs> and they all say hi. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, uh, going into that uh, season, you were coming off uh, a really good freshman campaign, all Ivy uh, honorable uh, mention uh, in uh, 2015. Did you uh, feel that, you know, there were high expectations coming into that season, maybe for yourself, for the team? Uh, was that a good thing? You know, just talk about your transition from that freshman year going into this season here in 2016 that we're watching. Yeah, I mean, my freshman year actually started off pretty pretty rough. Um, suffered an ankle injury early on in preseason, uh, so I missed 
um, you know, a, a decent bit um, of the games. But then when I, when I was able to come back in, um, I started off, you know, playing pretty well um, in the minutes that I was getting. So, obviously, I had a decent fresh year given uh, the amount of games I was able to play. And, you know, obviously, a player, there's, there's honors of, was an honorable mention, I believe, in, in the Ivy League. So, it it felt good, you know, being able to contribute um, as a freshman, as anybody could tell you. Um, but getting into that second year, obviously, it's, there are expectations given that we had, you know, been in the tournament. We lost to Syracuse in a tight game. Um, so, it, there, there were expectations. I wouldn't say, you know, personally, I, I, I always want to come in and, and contribute with goals and assists, you know, whenever I can. Um, so that's always a good no matter, you know, if I'm coming off a bear campaign or a cook campaign. So, but as a group, I would say there were expectations to, you know, stay in and around that top 25 in, in the country and make another tournament run and, and obviously win the Ivy League. So I think there were expectations, um, but I don't think any of us really felt, felt that way in, in regards to, like, we didn't, see it as oh, we have to do that. We knew we could, so it wasn't anything major on, 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 on that front. So I think we were all pretty confident in our ability to, to win the Ivy League and, and, like I said, do well on a, a national scale. So. No, it was it was that the same feeling you got as well, you know, coming off a, a, an Ivy League championship that there, you know, there was expectations, but there you didn't feel it, you know, that you guys knew you were going to compete again in 2016. Yeah, I mean, I feel like at some points, like, the pressure got to us. Like, we would feel big games, like, when we would play Harvard or Columbia. But I don't know. We kind of knew that if we just kept our heads down and did what we were supposed to do, that we were going to be either winning it or contesting for the best. So we kind of just – kind of exactly what Justin was saying. We didn't think about it a lot of the times. We just stayed focused on each game, and it worked itself out in the end. And Noah, can you speak to your development going from freshman year into this campaign that we're watching in 2016 and just, you know, what your personal goals were coming into this year? You ended up starting a few games the previous year. I think it was nine out of, out of 19, eight out of 19 that you started. Um, but what what that was like for you going in from year one now to year two that you had that experience under your belt? Yeah, I think my freshman year for me was definitely a little bit of an adjustment period. Because I remember I came in and I played in pretty well in preseason, but I kind of always had that mentality. I was like, got to prove myself. I had this like chip on my shoulder. And I don't know, I just always tried to do too much when I would come in. And once I kind of figured that out, calmed down, like got some more actual confidence in games, that's when I started starting games. Because I think – it was the Harvard game my freshman year. One of our other center mids, Giorgio, got injured, so I got the start. And then I just played super well that game. And we ended up winning, and like, which helped clinch the title for us. And then from then on, I kind of had the confidence I needed and kind of just the composure I needed to keep playing and starting. So I was able to carry that into this year. And I thought I played really well this particular season, my sophomore year. Um, I agree with that. I think that was kind of, yeah, that was kind of like, end of freshman season going through sophomore season I felt like it was kind of when I turned a corner as a player in terms of both like confidence and just my mentality going forward it's uh and of course Noah you uh claimed a second team all Ivy in 2016 so certainly a yeah, very uh, a very nice jump from your freshman year to uh sophomore year and uh Yima, you know, you look at 2016, this was your, uh, your junior uh, campaign. And, uh, you know, you meant you were talking about the season before playing Seattle. That was actually, if I'm uh, not mistaken, uh, that was your first collegiate goal was against Seattle the season yeah. prior. So uh, yeah. now that we've kind of got the, the uh, you know, the, the, the bolts turn in there, do you kind of remember that goal from, from the previous season? And yeah. you know, what that, what that uh, 2016 season was like for you personally, you know, going into it? For sure, for sure. Um, so my freshman year, I tore my meniscus, so didn't play. Um, so what is that, 2014? So um, 2015 season, uh, it was just, like, nice to be on the field. Like, I, it was, like, my first three year of Dartmouth soccer. Um, obviously, like, had a good good winter, good spring, like, good summer leading up into it. Um, and it's just, like, exciting to, like, finally, like, really be a part of the team um, just because I didn't get to play – or I didn't play really my freshman year. Um, but 
yeah, I think like going back to the Seattle game was good. It was honestly, it was, I, I vividly, I vividly remember it, but it's like one of those things that happened so quick. Like, uh, who was, I think it was Marsh. Uh, someone, was, I think Wyatt, we, we, we had position the ball in, the, in their, in their half. I think Wyatt or one, maybe Ricky passed the ball out to Marsh out wide who crossed it. Um, and it's one of those things where like the ball kind of like bounced up in the air. Um, Matt Greer was on the field at the time. He like shielded it. And like, it was one of those things where I just like, I don't know, like outside my foot shot it and like it went in and I was hype. I was, it was, it was, it was a, I was very hype. It was a, it was a good moment. Um, I, remember, I, I think my celebration was like pretty trash. Like, I just like ended up like in the air. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was an awesome. Give it like a C, C minus at best, but <laughs> it was a uh, <laughs> it was a great feeling. And I think that was tough about that game is that we did get that red card. Ooh, let me go there. Her names. Oh, you got clapped. okay, okay. Um, but yeah, it was it was a good feeling. Tough not to get a result that game because I think we we played really well, but the red card definitely definitely hurt us. Um, and guys, what was it? We were down two one, or we're down one zero, tied to one one. They scored another goal, and like we had all the momentum. I, I don't remember. Do you guys remember the specifics of the game? No, they uh, they we got the red card before they scored that second goal. Yeah, okay, that's what it was. But we had all the momentum. He stepped on him, and then Ricky got a red yeah. card. Literally nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, no, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. That gap where we should have um, center back, their center forward pops up and scores two minutes later. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, but I don't know. It was, I guess, like from th- from that season into this season. Like I think, like playing Seattle specifically. Like I knew I'd score my first goal against them. Was pumped to play them. Like obviously, like I, you you never forget your first goal. So um, I, I I didn't score this game. And I don't think I scored too many after that one. But um, it was I don't know. It was just really fun being out there. Good to again, like great group of guys. And uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll stop there. Coach, uh, you know, when you look at these three uh, gentlemen here joining us here uh, on the program, you know, uh, they were all veterans by the time you came in here. And what was their veteran leadership like that first season and helping that transition? Oh, it was it was unbelievable. Uh, you know, I'll be honest, I'll always be, uh, you know, indebted to them. And, uh, you know, even some of the other guys, you know, like Johnny Nirenberg, uh, you know, and things like that, that, you know, they just were totally bought in. You know, they had had success prior to me being here. And, uh, you know, they were bought into, uh, you know, what we were, uh, you know, trying to do. I think we had, a, you know, just a really awesome, you know, working kind of relationship that turned into, a, you know, a friendship, uh, you know, throughout the season, which was uh, which was awesome awesome. You know, it really, really was, uh, you know, they, they could have taken it a whole different way, um, you know, but they didn't, you know, they were, uh, they were totally, uh, you know, bought into, uh, you know, us coming in as a staff and, uh, you know, what we were, uh, you know, trying to continue to, uh, you know, build on. I think, uh, you know, when you guys were talking about before, uh, you know, about a certain standard, uh, you know, here at Dartmouth, you know, there is, you know, I mean, there's, it's no question that, um, you know, every recruit that we have come in, any players that are still here now, they all know that there's a, there's a certain standard here where, uh, you know, the Ivy League is just, uh, you know, winning the Ivy League is kind of part of the norm, you know, I mean, that's, uh, you know, something that goes without saying, you know, is that, uh, you know, our goal every year is to try to do that. And, uh, you know, now it's trying to, you know, continue that trend, but also, uh, you know, try to you know go even further in the uh, you know the NCAA tournament so uh, but to answer your question they were awesome you know the leadership I'm just watching this right here oh wow Jeez. <laughs> no, the, the leadership was awesome no it really really was uh, you know and it really helped even with uh, you know the underclassmen that were below them uh, you know as well because I think they set a certain bar uh, you know for all the leaders uh, you know that came after them uh, you know to continue that so it was it was great Still loose. Who's got it? You know, Justin, you know, it's, it's interesting, you know, coach mentions, you know, kind of this, you talked about the standard of, of Dartmouth men's soccer and where it is now. And the expectation, you know, is to compete for a championship year in and, and year out. But, you know, were you a, maybe not a little surprised, but, you know, just kind of pleasantly, you know, just how by the time you left where this program was having won, I believe, you know, three, four in a row Ivy league championships getting to the NCAA tournament. We, you know, were you a little surprised how you left it when, when it was all said and done, when your career was wound up, or you, or you, you knew it all along? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, 
Yeah, what a great tackle by you. But um, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say I was necessarily like completely surprised. Um, right. But I, I would say we were all very proud. I was very proud to, to you know, come into, you know, very new surroundings and, and buy into a culture that's, you know, we want to win. Um, and our first year, we, we ended up doing that. So it's like, okay, like, well, it's a good start. And then for us to do it again, and then again, after that, it's like, you know, we've already done something special, something that we're, we're we did, we're we did anyone to win it three times in a row. Is it uh, one more? We were the first I, I time it three or four times in a row. And yeah. like more than like, since since like Columbia and like the eighties or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. So that within itself, I think speaks volumes to, to the amount of work that not only the players, but the, the coaching staff, um, had done throughout our time there. I think everyone, like Coach Bo say, had bought into the, the the culture and, you know, we always had a winning mentality. Um, so it wasn't necessarily a surprise that we were, you know, getting results and winning the Ivy League, but it is something that I think we hold close to heart and we're well, very proud of to say that, you know, we went there, we, we got the job done more, more times than not um, against a lot of quality opposition. So I, I would say... At times, there were moments where we were like, wow, we actually like pulled that off. But <laughs> we always, we always um, believed in ourselves, you know, to, to get, get, you know, games over the line and, and get the win. So that's basically my take on it. I think that for me, Brett, that's probably the one thing that, uh, you know, I feel like our first year together, um, you know, was a little bit down was just that, you know, Justin, you know, was uh, injured, you know, quite a bit, uh, you know, during that season. Noah, you know, was injured, uh, you know, quite a bit or, uh, you know, during that season. Aduvia, you know what I mean? Like we never had, you know, that, uh, you know, full complement yeah. of, uh, you know, players because I, I feel like if we had a full complement of players, uh, you know, nobody would have stopped us, you know what I mean? And we still, I mean, even with that, you know, we still uh, we're, were good, but, you know, obviously, uh, you know, didn't, you know, continue to win, uh, you know, a fifth, uh, you know, Ivy League championship. No, was that, is that, uh, you know, is coach uh, speaking for you on that one? Just kind of that, you know, the way it kind of all ended, you know, again, the pieces were there. It just seemed like bad luck struck uh, on that final year. Yeah, there wasn't a single game where, like, front four from the year before me, Duvier, Dawson, Justin got to start one game together. There was only one game the whole season where all of us got to play. And that was like my first game back from injury against Princeton, where I played literally like the last five minutes only. Like it was, it was pretty frustrating because we had a really good unit going forward in general. And we just weren't able to take advantage of it at all senior year. I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I would, I could attest to that. It's like, um, for me personally, I, I started off my Dartmouth career injured and I ended it injured. So that's the only like regret I have. Um, and it kind of, obviously it was, it sucked because I started off senior year injured and I, but I knew I was going to be injured throughout the start of the season and then ended up doing pretty well when I came back and I started to feel, you know, that buzz again. And then yeah, injured in a Tuesday night game away at Vermont in a game that didn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Was, you know, I mean, obviously you can't control when things like that happen and I will never blame anyone for that, but it, for that to happen in those circumstances and in a game that literally, I mean, obviously you didn't want to lose, but it virtually didn't matter. And I was just like, for me to end my top of career like that was a little frustrating, but you know, I, I that didn't stop me from, you know, being with the team 24 seven and enjoying my last, you know, my last fall. Um, with the boys because at the end of the day that's what really matters you know we were all like a family as these these other two can contest and coach both can attest to so it was it was fun regardless um like Noah said it was it was frustrating that last year but you know we we made the most of it I would say yeah I I just like piggyback off of some of this like it was just like coming into the season we're all just like super elated right like you have like those four like getting like your uh, those four kind of like buzzing and clicking like I thought would be kind of, I, don't know, I think like leading up into the season like uh, knowing that I think everyone was just like, like super excited for it right just to see like what I mean that plus like the deep bench we had right like just like what kind of like the, the total damage we could do so I'm I'm com I'm completely agree with everyone where it's just it was kind of frustrating not to have the full group um, 
and it's like one of those things it's just like yeah, it, it feels as if like the Pokemon kind of got away um, I don't know just it, it would obviously it would have been nice to have um, but I guess like it's like it, it's sports it's in soccer specifically like you got you got about their injuries and uh, it happens to every team at some point so yeah, Yima, I was just going to ask Coach Bo, you know, talking about, you know, kind of the ups and downs of a student athlete and, you know, battling injuries and just trying mm-hmm. to overcome that mental, you know, not never mind physically, but the mental aspect too. I mean, that, that that's a little, that's a challenge that athletes are going to have to face through their career. Yeah, no, it's tough. I think luck, like, especially when you're first coming in, um, it's tough. Like Dartmouth is definitely like a regular school. Um, and then soccer, and I guess like the soccer season's in the fall. Right. So it is a tough adjustment, but I guess like the hope is after a couple of years, you kind of get the hang of things um, and you can start to do well. Oh, do we, uh, um, start to do well. Oh, uh, what, a, what a ball by me. Yeah. Buddy. What a ball, right? <laughs> <laughs> the road, on the absolute rope. Um, no, it's it's a, it's a tough adjustment, but I think look like the net result, like if, if you make it, like if you can like make it through and like bow through, like I think you come out on the other side, right? Like just a better person, like a better player, like um, just like overall. Just, I don't know. I think like when I think about what I actually learned in college and like lessons learned, like I basically like I think like the most important things I learned about just like life in general were from Dartmouth soccer for sure. Um, both on and off the field, I think the ideas of like commitment, like being a good team player, like communication right like all those soft skills like really really matter and like the real world i think i learned a lot of that through this program so like yeah obviously like it's a challenge but again like come out on the other side just like a better person so definitely worth it and coach bo i mean is you know is there something you can you know you can add to that in the sense that you know when you see you know, guys play Division One soccer coming, you know, whether it be at Dartmouth or whether it be at, at your prior stops, you know, um, I imagine, you know, kind of that battle of, again, you know, when you're dealing with injuries, when you're dealing with school, you know, that's something that you, you kind of learn and have to try and learn to balance pretty quickly, I would imagine, especially at a place like Dartmouth. Oh, for sure. I, I, I think that's, the, you know, the bigger cha- biggest challenge is just that the, uh, you know, the academic uh, you know, rigors, uh, you know, at Dartmouth, uh, you know, and then you add soccer, uh, you know, on top of it where, you know, it's not like, you know, the soccer is letting anything less than, you know, the best, you know, so, you know, having those together, you know, it definitely, uh, you know, molds guys, uh, you know, into something, uh, you know, pretty special. I think if you can get through, uh, you know, a Dartmouth career, uh, you know, by playing soccer at the highest level and also having, uh, you know, one of the best academic, uh, you know, institutions as well, you know, you can have, you know, success, uh, you know, far after. And I think, uh, you know, the one thing, uh, you know, that's, um, I wouldn't, it's definitely unique, you know, from a lot of different places that I've been at is, uh, you know, the bond, uh, you know, that these guys share, uh, you know, with each other. It's uh, it's something that um, is really, really special. And, uh, you know, no matter where you are on the pecking order, uh, you know, on the roster, you know that, uh, you know, you're part of a family. Uh, you know, you're part of a brotherhood of uh, guys that are all, uh, you know, rooting for you, you know, to, uh, you know, be, uh, you know, the best. And so I think that's something that, uh, you know, is, is really awesome, you know, here at Dartmouth. I think it's just funny, you know, Yima's in New York and he's sitting on the couch over there. You got, you know, Wyatt Amsberg and Johnny, you know, sitting there with, you know, that's that's the kind of, uh, you know, uh, brotherhood, you know, that's here that, uh, you know, you're really making life, uh, you know, long friends, uh, you know, which is, uh, you know, really awesome, you know, to, to be a part of. Noah, can you uh, speak to the, you know, the student athlete and you know especially at an ivy you're you're really emphasizing the student on on that part uh, as well not to take <laughs> away from from the athletic part of it but you, you know the the academics we know in the ivies are, are top notch can you speak to that experience and maybe you know when you first got here and how that how that changed for you you know the be, being able to balance both worlds yeah, well, it's pretty easy when your whole team's a bunch of academic weapons. So we were pretty good. <laughs> but, uh, very, very true. Very true. No, we, guys kind of figured out – guys guys figured out how to balance the academics with the athletics, especially during the season. Everybody kind of knew that you would have to set a reasonable expectation for yourself and what you could accomplish in the classroom if you wanted to actually make sure you were still getting it done on the fields and outside of the classroom. So I feel like guys would usually double down and do harder stuff outside of the season instead, um, which is where people would actually really make the real progress towards their academic careers. But 
I mean, it definitely takes some adjustment. It's not easy. Like that was also part of the issue with me freshman year is I was coming in from the other side of the country. I didn't know how to deal like culturally, academically with a lot of stuff. So I feel like once people adjust, because it is an adjustment, you just have to get used to being in midterms pretty much constantly from week three. On. <laughs> but once you kind of get over that and figure out the ways you can make life a little bit easier for yourself, then it's pretty smooth sound. That's a tall wall, man. <laughs> Who's in that wall? Is that a bunch of trees? <laughs> it's like Dan Lack Wyatt. No, are you in there? The Duvia. No, I'm not. The Duvia. I've been for me like five minutes before this. Jesus, man. Good luck. Uh, along, along this line, Dre, of that last question, I'm a little bit offended, right? That I wasn't asked that question. <laughs> because, out of, because out of everyone, I was probably the most busiest. Out of everybody. <laughs> and, and, and I wasn't the most academic, as most people can tell you. So. <laughs> it was a little bit of, a, um, little bit of a, a, a learning curve for me to just, just in terms of, like, obviously my decision to do track and all that as well, like in the off-season, when, you know, we were still training as a, as a soccer team pretty often, um, whether it was in the gym or, or in Lev room. Um, God forbid, Jesus. But anyway, in Leveron, um, you know, it was still pretty busy on, on that front. And we still had captain's practices. And, and some days for me, it was like I have like Tuesdays, Thursdays, have that training, have class, and then have to go to track practice. And it was, uh, there was some days where it was like, honestly, you didn't even know if you were going to see the end of it. But it was <laughs> – it was it was quite the adjustment, especially this because I think I believe this was my first year. And no, I, I had done it the year before, but that sophomore year was when you know things I started getting the hang of you know everything really at Dartmouth. Then it yeah it, it was always a constant battle. Just you know we all know we have to get up you know keep our priorities in check you know in regards to academics and making sure we're doing what we have to do off the field first and foremost. Um, before on the field. So, yeah, like Noah said, I mean, coming from different environments, um, it's it always a little tough to come into that, that little Hanover bubble and figuring out how how Dartmouth winters are the same as Bermuda, as Dartmouth winters are the same as Bermuda and Bermuda's winter is basically. <laughs> Very yeah, similar, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah, Hanover was nothing for me. I, <laughs> you know, Justin, you, you, you bring up a great point. You know, again, you, you also did track as well. As you just mentioned, you were a two-sport uh, athlete, and you actually uh, performed very well in 2016. I believe you finished second in the indoor triple jump uh, at the at the Ivies, which was uh, very impressive. I mean, you, we don't see too many two-sport athletes these days, but obviously you handled it well both on and off the, the court. But as you mentioned, you said it was it was tough, but you were able to battle through. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was always tough, just especially that winter. That winter period was always very tough um, because, like I said, for soccer, we were in the gym heavy. Um, you know, keeping it fit, we were doing off uh, uh, mile intervals in, in Leveron and still doing pretty like, big loads, you know what I mean, in terms of keeping it fit. Um, and to do that, as well as school, you know, usually, like I think he alluded to, in, in the winter, we would, you know, try to take harder classes just to, you know, because in the fall, you don't want to have a terrible schedule, you know, to get, you know, leave yourself swamped. So in the winter, guys will usually do that um, because, you know, no games and things like that. Um, but for me, it was always tough because I was trying to do that as well as balance of soccer. And then obviously having – you know, track practice twice a week, you know, and I think both, both sets of coaches were very understanding in every bus in my schedule. Um, and knowing that, you know, I'm, I'm pretty busy um, on that front, but it was, it, it was definitely a learning, learning curve, but it ultimately made me a better person in terms of juggling, you know, you know, things that life throws at you. It's, you're always going to, there's never going to be times where, you know, it was rarely time, sorry, at Dartmouth where I was doing nothing. And like, you know, it makes you appreciate when you don't really have nothing to do. <laughs> like I find myself sometimes now, you know, in, in full-time football, where I go practice and I, and I come home and I'm like, 
oh, I actually have like hours to kill. Whereas at Dharma feels like once you finish something, you on to the next. Um, but ultimately, like I said, it made you a more well-rounded person. And I feel like now I'm, I'm a lot more capable of hand, handling, you know, high stress situations or situations that can cause high stress to most people. Um, and just learning how to, how to deal with those things, you know, one step at a time. So yeah, I was always pretty busy, but I'm always, I'm thankful for, you know, not only the soccer team, but the track team in regards to their understanding of, you know, me wanting to compete for both teams and, and do well and put this school in the map. So, yeah, coach, was there, was there any doubt uh, or any concern in your mind when you first got here? And, you know, Justin says, hey, I'm, I'm going to do track as well. I mean, was, was, there any, was there any issue on your end or you were, you were all on board, obviously, yeah, as, as no. Justin said? Yeah, no, it wasn't, uh, you, know, uh, you know, an issue, uh, you know, especially in the fall, you know, it was easy, uh, you know, and then, you know, when we were done, you know, and then him, uh, you know, doing that in the winter, you know, we were more rooting for him, you know, to, to keep, uh, you know, having that, uh, you know, success, you know, because I think at that point, he had figured it out, you know what I mean? He had figured out how to balance, uh, you know, it all. So, uh, you know, for us, it was, uh, you know, more just, you know, an opportunity. Uh, you know, for him to, you know, follow one of his passions, you know, which was, uh, you know, track and field here at Dartmouth. So we're one nil right now, uh, 1028 to go in the first half as uh, again, a big green classic here, men's soccer, number 24, uh, Seattle here in town as uh, we're glad to have you aboard uh, here on uh, what seems to be a beautiful day on beautiful Burnham field coach. I know we've, mentioned this before and and i'll ask the guys to chime in on it but i, I just you know again we talk about how lucky uh, both men's and women's soccer is to have the facility at uh, at burnham field and uh, boy it just looks absolutely gorgeous here on the film as it does in person it, it's it truly is a treasure here in new england soccer yeah, no, we're, 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 that's one thing we're, uh, you know, fortunate with is, uh, you know, to, to have, uh, you know, a facility like, uh, you know, Burnham Field, uh, you know, to play on, especially in the Northeast where, uh, you know, most of the schools that, uh, you know, you play at are on uh, turf and things, or if they are grass, uh, it's not, you know, the best, uh, you know, services to, uh, you know, play on. Uh, you know, the fact that we have our, you know, practice, uh, you know, facility right behind the stands here, uh, you know, is a great, great, uh, you know, uh, advantage. Uh, you know, for us, you know, in the, the, the pavilion, uh, you know, that we have here, you know, where the guys literally are like pros, you know, where you can come right out of the locker room onto the practice field or onto the, you know, the game field is, uh, is a game changer, uh, you know, for us. And, uh, you know, I know these guys didn't get an opportunity to, uh, you know, touch the new indoor facility. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's something awesome. that I just listening to Justin talk about, uh, you know, Leveron. And, uh, you know, now the guys are able to actually play in, a, you know, an un unbelievable uh you know indoor facility here is uh is something that's uh you know unique uh you know especially at uh you know the ivy league level and i i think it's just a testament to uh you know dartmouth and their uh you know passion not only on the academic side but uh you know the uh the, you know the athletic side as well and uh you know especially when it uh you know pertains to uh you know men's soccer uh you know we do we have uh, some of the best facilities in the country yeah, that yeah, new facility is a joke. It looks so nice. <laughs> it looks absolutely, this, absolutely we absurd. We were we were laughing the other day. So we had our last training session on Friday. Uh, you know, before all the guys left, and uh, you know, we've been training on Burnham. Uh, you know, every single day, and so these freshmen have no idea. You know what I mean? Just that uh, you know they were able to actually spoiled. practice. Yeah, spoiled. Absolutely. You're right. They were able to Amber. practice on Burnham. Uh, you know, every uh, you know single uh, you know day. So. You know, it's uh, it's different, you know, for sure. And uh, like I said, I know these guys love, uh, you know, playing on these facilities here, uh, you know, while they were here as well. Coach, just to kind of piggyback off the, the new indoor facility and not to make our guests jealous, you know, even, even more, but um, you know, just, from a com just from a competitive standpoint, what, what is that going to allow your program to do moving forward? Oh, it's, it's, it's a game changer. You know, I think, uh, you know, we have the only permanent, uh, you know, indoor facility, uh, you know, in the Ivy league, uh, you know, for, uh, for guys to train, uh, you know, in the winter and, uh, you know, just the fact that we have, uh, you know, surface now to be able to have a training session, just like we would if, uh, you know, we were outside is, uh, is a game changer as far as, uh, you know, the development of, uh, you know, these guys, you know, when they're, uh, you know, here, I think, uh, you know, for us to, you know, be able to, uh, like I said, have a training session and not miss a beat 
um, you know, is, is something that's, uh, you know, unique, uh, you know, and something that we're, we're super excited about, uh, you know, moving forward. I, I, the, the surface in Levron, uh, you know, was not the, the most forgiving. <laughs> I'll just say that, you know, as far as how hard it was and, uh, you know, things like that. So, and it wasn't even that big, you know, to be able to, you know, do things when you had, you know, a full complement of players. So, uh, you know, I think now that, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, this indoor facility more on a developmental, uh, you know, side of things, I think it's definitely going to, you know, help us in the long run. Yima, um, what was it like playing on Burnham? You know, what, how was that, you know, a factor in your decision in coming here and just what it was like playing on the natural grass and, and, and having that as a home field advantage, which it certainly is for Dartmouth men's soccer. Yeah, no, Burnham is home. Burnham's absolutely gorgeous. It's the fields. It's first class. Like uh, our facilities are, are truly special. Like they, they, they got uh, the maintenance team does like an, or operations team does like an incredible job um, of just like keeping the the grass like super clean and super cut throughout the season. Um, but no, like I, I think you, you hit on the head right. Like Burnham, like it is an advantage. Just like the field itself um it's just like this like one of those things where like you step on burnham and like you just uh, it's just you you're, you're fully like in the mix right um and and then i guess we, we usually have like a really strong crowd uh my my five years right so like i don't know, like post any anytime anyone scored like jumping into the crowd's arms like some of those moments are just like the fond like fondest memories i have of dartmouth soccer but um yeah man burnham it's i mean it's like massive the, the grass is incredible the, the overall just like vibes on the uh, are, 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 are great uh, so um yeah <laughs> great 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 vibes um but I, i'm sure no and justin feel similarly oh yeah burnham's still like one of the nicest fields i've ever played on in my entire life i i must it literally like it was crazy because we had like what seven practice fields we had like four <laughs> fields yeah i'm sorry they're all so nice on black man we had like another field on chase we had the indoor facility and we have like we can train on scully fahey too and it's like five of those fields would probably pass as better game fields than most of the grass fields we've been in college too yeah. and then burnham itself is just perfect yeah I, I i agree i think even like uh practice fields you know chase four and, and blackman but chase four is actually very nice um yeah chase is a nice a little, a little bit better than than blackman but like noah said both of those fields can pass as better playing surfaces than definitely the teams are not in, in the Ivy League, but, you know, even in a lot of conferences outside. And obviously, you know, being able to, to train on the game field, like, you know, these these guys, they're not, you know, it's, 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 it's a little bit lucky of them to be able to do that, to play on such a nice surface all the time. Um, obviously, the circumstances are not great because of that, but I think, you know, I felt lucky to play at home every single every single time. Um, uh, look at me torch that guy. Oh, you just oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, bro? Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I think you know it was it was one of the best fields I've I've played on. Even you know not not on just a college or club level, but even on an international level. Like I've you know, I've played on some pitches that are worse than that. You know. At, at an international level, so that speaks volumes to what the the grounds the groundsmen have done um, at Dartmouth to keep to keep our field in in such tip top tip top shape. So, is there a uh, favorite uh, moment at uh, Burnham Field that comes to mind when you think? I mean, you can even think to this to the playoff game, the home playoff game you guys had against St. Francis Brooklyn, where you won in double OT uh, in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, you know, some great home crowds. Is there a, so is there one moment that sticks out a game for you guys uh, that, that, that Burnham field that will always stay true to you? Good question. Was yeah. Cool. Think about that for a second. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I probably should have gave you a heads up to think about that. <laughs> that was, well, I, I've it. got one. This isn't my favorite game. That's <laughs> Necessarily because we actually lost this game, but um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember when we played Colgate at home. These my my odd freshman year, me and Noah's freshman oh, year, yeah. and it was like I think it was the first game that students were on campus for the fall. It was like that first week, uh, true, and we true. like obviously we did our best to tell people you know come to the game, but we were you know we were expecting just a normal crowd. I kid you not, we come out for warmups and the whole stand. <laughs> is packed with people like it had to have been 
2,000 plus people at this game, um, you know, our first home game of the season. And that was, even though we went on to, you know, lose the game to a questionable free kick. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> even though that happened, it was still one of those moments where I was like, wow, like just looking out, you know, the times that I was on the bench and just during the game and just seeing how many people were there supporting us. And, and you know, it was a, just a beautiful fall night, um, a little chilly per usual, but it was a nice night. Um <laughs> And just to see the support, that was just one of the like images I just have that stick out in my mind. I'm not necessarily obviously because of the game, but just because of the overall atmosphere that 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 was there at Burnham. So that that's not my favorite game, like I said, but that's just one thing that sticks out in my mind. Um, trying to think of one game. I mean, there's just so many good. How many like I like, I would love to see the number of the coming games we won in overtime with. Like, <laughs> yeah, a, a lot like, of like, Matt Danlack like header like Justin you smashing the ball in. They were they were oh, yeah, the there. Columbia game freshman year when Justin scored the freaking. Yeah, bench. that was. Uh, <laughs> I just I remember watching that from the from the bench and being I, like it was one of those things everyone just looked around and I was just like did this just like did that just actually happen? Like, was <laughs> I was I was literally running, running. I was trying to overlap Justin and as I'm still running behind him, he just tees up and shoots from like thirty. And I was like, bro, what are you doing? I was like, <laughs> I was yelling. I was like, Justin, and then I just stopped when you shot it. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> little, little, little did they know I was gonna do that for the next four years. <laughs> Shoot from anywhere. Anywhere. I <laughs> can't blame you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you actually took a team high 44 shots this season, uh, Justin. <laughs> season. Yeah, yeah, so it sounds high about right. 44 shots, <laughs> <laughs> four, four, four four shots and about three goals. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, any, uh, any uh, fun Burnham memories that uh, stick out with you? Either it's a game or just kind of a funny moment. Anything like that come to mind for you? I remember when our fans were absolutely abusing the Penn goalkeeper. That was hilarious. <laughs> he got so in his head and they were yelling like left, right. And he got him so bad. They started trying to switch up his steps and like, <laughs> <laughs> or just, I don't know. All, all the best memories from the games for sure. The most memorable ones are the ones where the fans just start going like the fans made it all so many times. Like after I remember my sophomore year, um, when we were playing Brown to clinch the Ivy League title and I scored the first goal in that game, just running and jumping in the fans after that was so fun. Yeah. I remember Yima like looked at me to celebrate and then just tore away from me and sprinted right. <laughs> <to my fans. laughs> Can't play, man. But like just um, moments like that were definitely the best. And like, like you're saying like the St. Francis Brooklyn game. And then, uh, I don't remember who we played the year before when Marsh turned and scored the game winner in OT, like those two OT wins in the first round of the tournament. Wait, St. Frank, St. Francis Brooklyn wasn't Marsh? No, that was, I said the year before. The St. Francis Brooklyn game was Dan Alex winner. And then the year before Marsh scored the winner against whoever it was. It was like. It's like some New York team. Yeah. Um, but like those two games, I remember just like the OT winners in the first round and jumping in the stands after that. Like that was some of the very, some of the very best moments too. Yeah, we got worked that first half. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we honestly worked. Well, um, we have come to the end uh, of the first half as uh, number 24 uh, uh, Seattle leads 16th ranked Dartmouth 1 at nil. We'll take a break and we'll come back with more Big Green Classic. Stick around. Make your debit card green. Big Green. Select from 16 options by visiting any Ledyard Bank location or calling 888-746-4562. Ledyard's online and mobile banking includes free personal mobile check deposit so you can show all your Dartmouth pride on your home turf. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Hi, I'm Chelsea from WISE. I'm at home practicing social distancing just like all of you. For almost 50 years, WISE has supported survivors in times of stress and crisis. Even during these unusual and uncertain times, we are still here for you and your loved ones. On those inevitably hard days or moments when you're not feeling particularly strong, we are here for you every hour, every day. While it feels like everything in our world has come to a halt, Violence doesn't stop just because there's a virus. Call 866-348-9473 
And to chat with us online, visit our website, wiseuv.org. Call 866-348-9473. You are not alone and you don't have to be in a crisis to call. Domino's knows a thing or two about delivery. So when we saw people were getting tacos and burgers delivered like these, we had to step in. Introducing our new chicken taco and cheeseburger pizzas. What? Oh, my. Now the best way to get a taco or burger delivered is to get a Domino's pizza. All right, welcome back. Big Green Classic. Brett Franklin with you. Dartmouth men's soccer is the sport, and we're talking September 11th, 2016, as the 16th-ranked Dartmouth Big Green hosts the 24th-ranked Seattle Red Hawks. As we get the second half underway, I welcome back our uh, panel here, and uh, thanks again to head coach Bo Oshani, also Yima Asom joining us, class of 2019, Justin Donawa, class of 2019 as well, and Noah uh, Piravicini, class of 2019, joining us. Class of 2019, all around here on uh, on the program. And uh, guys, uh, after a first half that was, uh, as Yima said it, uh, you know, Seattle pretty much uh, putting on the pressure early on in that game. And um, not to spoil it, but second half, obviously Dartmouth will, will play a, a lot better here. But um, I'll ask all three of you guys, um, Noah, Justin, and Yima, you know, from what you guys can remember, uh, going into that half, do you remember kind of what the conversation was? Just kind of remember what you were feeling going into that game against Seattle. Had a lot of opportunities in that first half, but defensively, you guys really uh, held down and uh, kept it a one-nil game at the half. Uh, honestly, yeah, I would. I don't talk at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> too long for you, Noah. Too too far yeah, away to remember. It's been a while. <laughs> no, I, I I would say generally. I, <sighs> Just in situations like this, when obviously we're one done, one, one no done at the break, it's basically just, you know, we're still in it. The, the game's nowhere near done. Um, you have 45 minutes to go out there and and change the game, make a difference, get the equalizer and get the, the game in and go. And in, this, and in this instance, we were able to do that because no matter what, we still had that belief that we had what it took to win the game still, even though we were done. So that was, I, I know for a fact in, you know, throughout our Dartmouth careers, that was generally the conversation that we were going to break um, behind. So I can't imagine this one being too different um, or, or straying far from that. So, yeah, that was basically what, what I could say from, from, you know, being at Dartmouth and or being a Dartmouth soccer player in these instances. I imagine the experience – and the veteran leadership kind of keeps that ship pretty stable when, you know, if you're trailing at the half, Justin, right? Like that, that experience, having been there before, you know, there's, there's not that panic that doesn't set in, if you will. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we always have good leadership groups, you know, not only just with the coaching staff, but within the senior classes and, and even the junior classes, um, guys who are, you know, very good at motivating the group and, and getting us going and getting us fired up to, to overcome you know, um, situations like this. Yeah. And I, I feel like just like from experience, um, uh, there was just like this mentality of just like finding a way to win, um, for a lot of it. Right. So whether it was the last, last second goal or like the last uh, goal that came like in overtime, it was just like having like the confidence and the patience to, to realize that like, you do what you need to do and like we will we can, we can always find a way right like I, I think like what people forget like it only takes what like five five seconds to get the ball from like the center or the goalie to the forward right so it's just being patient being calm on the ball being confident um just having like that sort of mentality getting close here i believe to our uh, our equalizer as uh, Seattle leading it uh, 1-0 here. Uh, pretty interesting as the uh, shadows start to lurk in here. Not too often do you see a 5 o'clock start time at, uh, at Burnham Field, but uh, do the shadows, the sun kind of play into effect at all when you kind of got that start? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say they do. Um, okay. I think yeah, I th- it, 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 because of where the sun's – it's not like – I don't think the – well, the goalkeepers are a little bit like got half and half a little bit, but I don't think it's, it was never really a conversation in, in regards to 
you know, be aware of the sun or, or this and that. I think it was just something we just dealt with and it wasn't ever, it wasn't ever really a, a major, major problem. Yeah, it's not like either team was facing the sun in a half. It came from the side yeah, for both teams. Exactly, so. yeah. I think the one like thing that wanted to pick your head up and play a long ball to Justin in behind that you couldn't really see him. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> look, um, the one thing I will say though is that look, like, I, I think we all prefer a uh, 7 p.m. under the lights game versus a 5 oh, p.m. So start. Yeah, but hundred <laughs> percent. Now the referee calling here. He was talking to someone on Seattle. I feel good about this free kick for some reason. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I also yeah, don't know about it. I'm not yeah. sure. So a free kick for Dartmouth here. Who's that? Yeah, Amadou and Greer on the ball? Eight seconds remaining. Second half. Seattle won. Dartmouth nothing. That's, is that Dallas right there? Yeah, Dallas. Yeah. Greer takes the kick. What a ball in, by the way. Oh, oh, baby. Let's see the, the, let's see the seller. Dartmouth scores the equalizing <laughs> goal. Not bad. Oh, we, we were, I, okay. I think as a team, as a team, we were poor at celebrating. Oh, yeah. we were terrible. Creativity is very poor. DJ and Bob Carter had good celebrations. That was about it. Uh, zero. Do you remember Bob's celebration freshman year after his goal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uncles. So there you go. Matt Danilak gets the uh, equalizer, uh, the assist from uh, Matt Greer. And uh, the game nodded up uh, just like that at uh, one apiece. So, again, uh, Justin, you kind of talked about it uh, when we started this uh, second half, you know, that there was no panic, that, uh, you know, everybody was still in the zone. And right there, you guys get a, get the equalizer. And just like that, it's a whole new game. Yeah, and I think, you know, within the, in the first, what, five, six minutes of – yeah. of the turn of the half. And they say, you know, the last five minutes of the first half and the first five minutes of the second half are very, very key moments in terms of being defensively sound and, and being compact um, because it's easy to get caught up in those moments that we were able to catch them up, you know, coming right out of the break. So I think, you know, we, we done well to stay, stay, you know, as a group to get that goal. Uh, good ball by Greer, by the way. Also, very good ball. That goal was big, too, because it set the tone for the rest of the half. Like, we had pretty much all the momentum for the majority of the half. Yeah. Exactly. Great start. Great start to the half. Yeah, if you look at the shots by period in this contest, Seattle uh, had a 10-5 shot advantage going into the halftime uh, locker room. And then when it was all said and done in the second half, uh, Dartmouth limited them to 9-4. to four. Uh, You guys had the shot advantage in the second half. So uh, certainly uh, what appears to be a, a tale of two halves, uh, certainly for the big green. Um, I kind of want to bring it back, guys, to you know your journeys to Dartmouth and kind of how – you landed here in the Upper Valley, how you committed to Dartmouth soccer, and just kind of that journey that, that brought you to Hanover. And uh, no, I guess I'll, I'll start with you and just kind of how you became a member of the Big Green. Um, basically, Coach, uh, Coach Ryan Fahey was doing some recruiting out in California, and he went to one of my club games to watch one of my teammates, but also liked me, and he called me, and I was like, well, I don't want to go to school in the middle of New Hampshire. <laughs> and eventually one of my friends convinced me, one of my friends whose moms went to Dartmouth was just like, come on, give them a call back, like go for it. Called them back. Coach Fahey ended up talking my ear off for like an hour, convinced me to come out to a camp. I went out to a clinic, absolutely loved it there, played well at the clinic for a couple of days. And then they offered me a spot and I took the offer a couple of weeks later. For Seattle. Was there uh, any? Got- yeah, go ahead, Yima. Yeah, or, so, yeah, did you have a follow-up question for now? Yeah, no, no, go right ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Well, so I know about my story. So I uh, grew up in Dallas, played soccer in Dallas, and played for Solar, um, which is which was an academy team at the at the time. So I think just like they're one of the showcases. Um, uh, through one of the showcases, like, I, I think it was Chase Wildman, actually, who, which, who was a former assistant coach, uh, who now coaches at Kentucky, I believe. Yeah, he's at coach. Kentucky. Yeah, he's at Kentucky, yeah. So he, uh, watched, he, 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 I think it was one of the showcases. He uh, watched me play and liked me. Um, oh, I love that take from Greer right there. Um, anyway, so uh, that's kind of how I got on the radar. But as we just like committing, the whole process for me um, it was one of those things where, funny enough, my little sister actually, who ended up playing at Princeton, was come came came up in the fall. 
um, came came up to Dartmouth in the fall for a camp. Um, and my mom was just like, oh, you know, like, I know these guys like reached out to you, like, and maybe it makes sense to just tag along to see if you like, like the place and just got a feel for it. And like, I kid you not, it was like one of those things where like, I was actually, so this was the weekend after, or that week, I think like that, so it was a Thursday, that Thursday I got my driver's license, I believe. Um, and so that Friday, like we fly into Logan and we get a rental car. My mom was just like, all right, you know, like good luck like here you like like take us and take us to hanover so um i just remember that like that drive specifically it was like a way like pitch black like look i i, I i'm a good driver but like i wasn't i was <laughs> i just got my I, I guess it was my license um but anyway so get on campus i think we parked by lose and like i kid you not i was like one of those things where like i just like fell in love with the, the place like hopped out of the car and like and there was just like something about like the ambiance is just like oh jeez, that was a good chance. Uh, did I put that on? That looks like me. Um. Anyway, uh, it was one of those things where I was just like on campus. Um, I just like loved it. Like just everything about it. Like it just like it just clicked. Um, and so. I think later that winter around January is like when I officially committed and obviously like the best decision I made, like it was like, I absolutely love Dartmouth, absolutely love Dartmouth soccer. So uh, yeah, it's kind of how that's, that's my story. I'm sorry. That's 17. That's kind of funny. He even pointed out to me his senior year that uh, I had actually sent him an email uh, recruiting <laughs> when I was an assistant at, uh, at Penn state. So I thought that was, <laughs> I thought that was uh, you know, pretty funny. What, what was it about his game uh, coach that, uh, that uh, made you uh, go after him? Yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, especially for the club that he played for. I mean, the, the Solar Club, uh, you know, when Yima was there was, uh, you know, and it still is actually, you know, one of the top, uh, you know, clubs in the country. And, you know, he was one of the most dynamic players, uh, you know, for his uh, his team. And so, you know, I thought it would be, you know, a, a decent fit and, uh, you know, come full circle. It's, uh, you know, funny how things, uh, you know, kind of work <laughs> itself out. So. Justin, uh, your journey to Hanover, what was it like? Yeah, so obviously I'm born and grew up in Bermuda, um, night and day compared to Hanover, but yeah, you might know. <laughs> um, grew up there, um, you know, went through normal school and stuff like that. Did one year of high school there, and then I ended up finding myself in boarding school in Sheffield, Mass, um, in, in New England. So it wasn't, you know, New Hampshire wasn't necessarily foreign territory in regards to geography and, and weather and stuff like that but did four years um at boarding school at Berkshire school um did all right there and you know I was getting getting a little bit of um excuse me attention from you know some d1 schools d3 schools um but just wasn't really sure of where exactly I wanted to go um I knew I wanted to get a good I knew from the start that I wanted to get a good balance between good soccer and, and, and good academics. So I would say I wanted a, a, a good balance between those two. I didn't want to go to a school that, you know, possibly had great soccer, but um, not as good academics. Um, so, but Ivy League was never really something I had thought about. Like, you know, I thought of Ivy League, I thought Harvard, Princeton, Yale um, type of type of places. So that was never really in, in my mind at all. And then, um, Dartmouth had reached out, um, and, and from early on, actually, probably you know, before before my senior year, probably early junior year, whenever it was it was okay to reach out, they were one of the first schools to do that. And you know, I kept in contact, and they came to a lot of my games. Um, <clears throat> Coach Riley and and Chase Wildman was there, like Yima said, um, when I first visited. I did two unofficial visits. Um, I never did an official visit, which was weird, but I, I did two unofficial vi visits. <laughs> um, yeah, it, was, it was very strange. Um, but um, did my visit there, and it, honestly, it just felt like the team was, was a family. They all, you know, they all mixed in with each other. It was very close-knit community, even outside of, of, of the soccer team. Um, it was pretty familiar. Obviously, me having gone to school in New England before that, um, I, I was – used to the scenery and like I said, the weather and things like that. So 
it, it seemed like like yeah I, I could see myself at this place any warrior head obviously as probably most of us was near the academics so people were tough as we had heard um but we knew that the, the soccer program was only up and up and they were doing well and by the time i got there me and noah got there they already you know won a, a league championship so it it was definitely a grew on me to, um, to say the least um and you know, it, like I said, at the end of the day, I just wanted a good mixture between good soccer and good academics, and I was able to get great soccer and even better academics. So you could, you can't really say no to that, you know, that mixture of of the two. Um, I remember my soccer coach at at boarding school was like, he used to call me Donnie. He'd be like, Donnie, people would give their right leg to go to Dartmouth. Okay, you've had a good at Dartmouth. So I was just like. <laughs> I was like, all right, that's a good point, good point. So, <laughs> up just, you know, I went on a few official visits elsewhere. I think SMU, BU, um, one more school, I can't even remember that. Oh, Bucknell. Um, but Dartmouth just, you know, stood head and shoulders above the rest. And I, I, like I said, couldn't really say no to the opportunity. And I'm glad I took it because it allowed me to make, you know, lifelong friends and, and then keep lifelong um, relationships going even after graduating. So it's basically my path. Coach, when you uh, when we talk about recruiting for today's program and some of the characteristics and qualities that you look at for potential players to come to your program, well, what, what are those characteristics? What are those variables that you look for in a guy to join your program? Yeah, I, I think that, these three, you know, kind of, you know, showcase, uh, you know, the first thing that, uh, you know, we look for and they have to be good kids. Uh, you know, they have to have, uh, you know, good character because, um, you know, there's a lot of great players out there that, you know, just, uh, you know, aren't coachable, you know, and, uh, you know, when you get those type of kids, you know, it's impossible to, to get them better because they kind of know everything, uh, you know, and things. And, uh, you know, like these three, uh, you know, they had won, you know, three Ivy League, sorry, four Ivy League championships and, uh, you know, they still were open, uh, you know, to the idea of, uh, you know, how can I get better? And so I think that's, uh, you know, the, the first thing that we look for is, uh, you know, kids that, um, you know, have a good mentality, have a good mind space, uh, you know, that they can continue to grow, uh, you know, as players. I, I think the second piece is, uh, you know, they have to be, um, you know, a, a soccer you know, junkie, you know, they have to love the game, you know, they have to want to play the game because here at Dartmouth, uh, you know, with our, with sometimes our, uh, you know, training hours and things like that, if you truly don't love the game, you know, you're not going to, you know, give everything you have at a captain's practice or, you know, when the coaches aren't around. So that's why it's important, uh, you know, that they truly, truly, uh, you know, love the game of, uh, of soccer and want to continue to push themselves to get better. Uh, you know, there definitely has to be a technical a aspect of it uh, because we do like to play. Uh, you know, we, we call it proper football, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, you know, we do. We like to, uh, you know, be able to, uh, you know, possess the ball. So you have to be able to be have, a, you know, a technical, uh, you know, capability to you and, uh, and a good soccer IQ of an understanding of the game. Um, oh. Uh, but those are, you know, a couple of aspects, uh, you know, that we look for. And then, you know, the athletic piece. I think all three of these guys, you know, on the athleticism side, uh, you know, can uh, cover ground, uh, you know, on the field. And so I think that's something that's, uh, you know, very, very important because, uh, you know, if you can't cover ground, uh, you know, if you can't exploit space, uh, you know, in behind defenses and things like that, then, uh, you know, you're always, uh, you know, just keeping the ball to keep the ball. And so, uh, you know, those are areas, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, we really, really look for. And, uh, you know, making sure that they, you know, fit, uh, you know, kind of our culture, our mentality, uh, you know, here at, uh, at Dartmouth. Noah, well, when uh, bringing it back to you and then Yima and, and Justin can, can dive in on it, uh, what, what do you think was the biggest uh, adjustment or challenge that you faced uh, going oh from God, high school to Division back One? Back Justin. Yeah, Justin, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to put. Uh, sorry, what was the question? No, that's okay. Uh, what, what was the big, what was the biggest jump or the biggest adjustment for you going from the high school to the Division One level? And then Nima and Justin, you can chime in on that as well. Definitely just the pace. That was like really what it was because I knew that like technically and physically I could hang with people at the college level. Maybe not physically as much as a freshman because I was still pretty scrawny, but. <laughs> I mean, at least like, I knew, 
at least technically I knew I was there with everybody, but just like the speed of play and just like the quickness of thought and just like, I don't know, just a lot of the intangible stuff was really what it took an adjustment to, uh, or I had to make an adjustment to. Um, and that came after, like I said, like it took a couple months kind of just to get myself rooted both like mentally on and off the field. Yeah, the one thing I'll say, I, I think like pace intensity for sure. I think the one thing, the substitution rules are different in college. Um, and you can kind of have more people come in and out of the game. And I can look the net effect of that. It's just like, it's honestly just like, it's always go, go, go. Like people are always like sprinting or like trying as far as they can, like working super hard, right? Just by virtue of you having fresh uh, legs on the, on the field. Um, I, think, I think that was one thing. Um what else? And I think, look, it's like, it, it's a bit, I guess like it, I'd say it's more challenging in that, like the games, I, I feel like in club soccer, you're playing year round, like you're playing so many games that like you, you, it's one of those things where like you maybe like you're taking a game or two for granted throughout the course of the season. Right. But like within like NCAA soccer, right. Like we had what, 16, 17 guaranteed games a year. And it's just like not that many. So like every game was just like, you have to be like from the start, you have to be on, um, you have to be like completely dialed in um, because it's just like, there's no, you, there's just like not that there's not too much room for mistakes. Um, so yeah, I'd say those two things for me. Yeah, I, w- I would definitely agree with the the intensity part, and like you must say, say it. Um, substitution rule kind of plays into that because you know it's <laughs> now you think okay, th- three subs usually when you're thinking about you know world football, and it's like okay, defenses get tired, I'm gonna make a substitution now to you know wear them out even more. Whereas like at the college level, it's like people are never really like dog tired unless somebody plays a 90 and, and me and Yima as bringers, um, you know, we, we spent a lot of time coming on and off for each other. Um, and we were at Dartmouth. So we were able to give, you know, work hard for, I say 30 minutes and then get a little breather and then come back on for another 30 minutes and, you know, be able to play at a high intensity both times. So the intensity part was definitely a bit of a shock for me, at least, um, especially coming from the league where I was playing high school. That, you know, frankly, wasn't wasn't that that good in terms of the intensity, um, and I would say the physicality as well, especially in the Ivy League, um, where you know, center backs were six 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 seven, goalkeepers <laughs> were massive. Like yeah. it was a big jump in in that regard. And then I I knew I needed to do some work technically, and that came, um, you know throughout my years at Dartmouth, but definitely the intensity and the physicality were the two things that stuck, stuck out to me. Coach Bo, I'll, I'll ask you the uh, same question here, just from the head coaching perspective. I mean, I think uh, everybody kind of hit on pace of play, speed of the game. That's kind of a big shocker for everybody when they come to D1 soccer for the first time. Yeah, definitely. I, I think, uh, you know, the speed of play, speed of thought, uh, you know, is definitely, uh, you know, part of it, um, you know, and then I think just, uh, you know, the, the attitude to compete in, uh, you know, every single roll of the ball, whether that's a training session or in, um, you know, a, a match. You know, uh, a lot of guys, um, you know, whether they're coming from high school or club, you know, they can get away with, uh, oh, get away with uh, you know, not being, you know, fully in competing every single roll of the ball because they're the best players, uh, you know, from where they come from. But, uh, you know, when you come to a place, uh, you know, like Dartmouth, where you're surrounded by, uh, you know, players that are just as good if not better uh you know then you that that competition that that mentality to compete uh you know in every roll of the ball is uh you know something that uh you know sometimes okay, Noah. Guys a little time nice though Let's strike learned it from my roommate <laughs> yeah, yeah can you get back to um yeah, go ahead, Justin, if you got something. No, I was saying I just – I had one shot that I don't know if any – I was going to say something, but Coach Bill was talking. But that's hard. <laughs> yeah, that's – One at the beginning of the half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to say something too, but <laughs> – I said, oh, I hope nobody saw that one. <laughs> no, I see you. <laughs> When we talk about, you know, playing in the Ivy League guys, you know, obviously here we got a non-conference tilt uh, against Seattle, but, you know, can you uh, walk us through a little bit more once you get into that 
Ivy League mind, that set of, you know, when you're going into league play, obviously there's, there's no league tournament. So every game is that much more dialed in. I mean, it, d- did it have that playoff feel knowing that, you know, hey, one slip up and, and, and your Ivy League chances could be, could be difficult. Was there, what was that mentality to like going into Ivy play and, and, and having those battles? Yeah, hundred percent. Every Ivy League game felt like an NCAA tournament game, or even more so, because at least in the tournament, teams would try to play. Half the time, teams in the Ivy League just try to make sure the ball is in the air for as much of the game as possible, <laughs> and they do everything in the power to make it as terrible of a game of football as possible. And it's just so intense. And if you lose two games in the Ivy League, you can't win the league, basically. So yeah, the Ivy League games were by far and away the most intense games we played every season. And I think to Noah's point, I think like with the, the coaches did a really good job of making sure our schedule was of the type where like we were ready for it, right? So the reason why you start off with like play, playing such tough competition usually every year is just to prep you for that. Because I, I think what well, we play Princeton every year to start um, in the Ivy League, and like it's one of those things where like it just like changes. Like, there's a new, there's a kind of like a different R to it, right? Where like it is like a two game elimination type tournament, right? Like you can, oh Jesus, Matt. Um, yeah. He hit back in the head. Just missed him. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. Um, anyway, it's, it's one of those things where it's just like it's different, right? Like you cannot like every it, it, every every league game is just it, it, it matters so much. So I think like um, yeah, starting off with Princeton, it's just like you kind of you. It's like a extra call it like extra level of focus um and you're you just like you do your best like you have to win that first way first game or like you have to get results just because like again like double double elimination type tournament yeah i i could attest to that i think uh, you know my my first game uh you know in the abbey league was against princeton like gima was saying and uh you know i had never seen like a level in college just the the the, the mindset of uh you know guys trying to literally kill each other uh you know on the field from both teams and like noah said you know the game wasn't really great but you know just the level of intensity from the guys on the field to the the, the fans uh you know was just uh a whole nother uh, oh, oh. A whole nother level. Um, you know, and I can remember that game. I mean, we were up 2-0, going on five, basically. Uh, you know, literally, it could have been four or five, nothing at halftime. Yeah. We were killing Princeton, and then we get – our goalkeeper gets red carded. Princeton ends up scoring two goals. We go into the halftime 2-2. And, like, to their point, you know, you know if you lose this game, you know, it could be tough, you know, to, you know, rebound and try to still have an opportunity to win the Ivy League championship. So, you know, we ended up walking out of that game with a 2-2 tie and, you know, playing a man down for almost 60-something minutes. But, you know, just the level of intensity, uh, you know, in that match, I mean, it was something that was new, you know, because, uh, like you said, when you have conference tournaments in other conferences, you know, no matter where you finish, you know, you still have a chance to get into the conference tournament and then, uh, you know, try to get that automatic bid. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, unique, uh, you know, with just not having a conference tournament and just having the single table, uh, you know, kind of uh, format. From a coaching perspective, Coach, does, does that change your mentality, your preparation as far as, you know, okay, we're going into from non-conference to – I mean, you're obviously going for a win, obviously, but does it change? Just, just, you know, are you a little bit more aggressive, more conservative? How, how do you approach that from a from an X's and O's standpoint going into Yeah, I, I think that's uh, – I think Ema might have pointed it out. You know, I think that's why it's so important to play those tough games early on, you know, so that when you do get to the Ivy League games, you guys are you guys are used to it. You know, your guys are used to playing against the highest level, uh, you know, competition, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in the country. And so I think, like, in that standpoint, it's, uh, it's relatively – easy. I think the challenging part becomes once you get into the Ivy League season and those midweek, uh, you know, non-conference games and how you, you know, handle those. And I think, uh, you know, in, uh, you know, a testament to Dartmouth in the past, you know, they've been deep enough where they've been able to maybe rest some guys, you know, in those matches so that, you know, they have their full complement of players, uh, you know, for the weekend, uh, you know, whether that's against, uh, you know, Cornell, Yale, whoever it may be, uh, you know, so I think that's the, you know, the unique challenge is trying to find that balance of, you know, making sure your guys are, uh, you know, fully, uh, you know, ready to go on the weekends, because like I said, you don't want to lose any games, but you want to make sure that, uh, you know, you have your full complement of players, uh, you know, for the weekend and that they're, you know, fully ready to go, uh, you know, in the, in those games. I can remember when we played, I think it was Lehigh, uh, my first year here, 
we literally <laughs> rested everybody and, uh, you know, threw out a bunch of, you know, freshmen and, uh, you know, let them kind of, you know, battle in that game. And, uh, you know, ended up with a zero, zero tie because we knew we had Columbia, uh, you know, on the, on the weekend on a Friday. And so, uh, you know, it was just that balance of trying to make sure that you said that you, you know, get everybody minutes so that, uh, you know, when you get to the weekend, you're ready to go. I want to make sure we, we uh, get some time in to find out what our, uh, our current alumni are, are up to these days. Oh, what a ball, uh, Justin. Oh, oh, oh what, wow. a save. what a save. What a save. That's, ball that's, my, that's my in a 10 coming out, though. <laughs> <laughs> what a ball. What a save. Wow. That was yeah, a great was chance there. right there. Great chance. <laughs> um, but what, uh, what are uh, Justin, uh, Yima, and uh, no, what are you guys up to these days? Uh, are you still playing? Uh, what, what, what are you doing now as, as alums of, of Dartmouth College? Up here in the press box. Uh, yeah, so I'll start. So I am currently a second year uh, banking analyst at UBS um, in New York City. Um, I have been, I guess, like once COVID hit in mid-March, uh, I, I kind of went back home uh, to Dallas and was working from home uh, and have been working from from home for, for most of it. But uh, yeah, in, in New York for, for a week or two just to work out here. But um, yeah, that, that's kind of that's me. Um, all right. I basically, after graduating, I graduated early in fall to in fall of my senior year to play, but I ended up tearing my groin, which was not ideal. It was kind of the injury that was hampering me senior year. I had to get surgery on that, worked for a little bit while I recovered from that, um, then started training with some USL and NISA teams, and then ended up signing for Hartford Athletic in the USL out in Connecticut. Um, spent the season there, but unfortunately got injured again, tore my ACL a few months back, and now I'm recovering from that again and figuring out where I'm going to play next. And um, like Noah, um, you know, I'm, I'm not Mr. Wall Street like Yima, but um, <laughs> <laughs> like Noah, um, I uh, finished a bit early, um, fall of senior year. Um, we were both done. Um, so, because I knew I wanted to play after. Um, and I went on a trial with Aberdeen, which is a team in Scottish Premiership that didn't work out, but it was a great experience nonetheless. Um, and then I ended up going home for a bit. And then since I was injured my whole senior year, it was kind of a, you know, kind of a bummer because I knew like my chances of maybe getting drafted and things like that were very slim. Um, having any played about six or seven games senior year. Um, so I was kind of just a little bit bummed out by that. I wasn't expecting much. Um, I knew when the draft was and stuff, but I wasn't really, I didn't really have high hopes for it. Um, and the Columbus crew ended up taking me to third round, um, thankfully. And I had a, you know, a really good experience going on preseason with them um, in California for two weeks. Unfortunately, it didn't work out again. Um, but like I said, I valued the experience. Um, I got to play with some world-class players and under, underneath a good coach. Um, and then I ended up going home for a little bit and ended up going on trial with the Pittsburgh Riverhounds in the US, USL. Sorry. Um, that didn't work out again. So at this point, I wasn't really feeling the best um, in terms of how things are going to work out with my playing career. I ended up going home for a few months and training with Bermuda, the national team, and we went to the Gold Cup. Um, we qualified for that after beating the Dominican Republic. Um, I was able to score in that. Uh, but then we ended up playing Costa Rica, uh, Haiti, and Nicaragua in the Gold Cup, which was also a great experience um, playing against, you know, a World Cup side um, with, with players that played in the Premier League and things like that. Um, Came home from that, and then my agent said, I had, you know, it was an opportunity to trial in England. And I said, you know what? You know, things have run its course in the U.S. at the moment. So I said, you know, why not? Um, and I came over to U.K. last July, July 2019, and, and the trial worked out with Donington Football Club in the National League North, which is the sixth tier of English football. And I had a really good season there um, and was able to – you know, earn another, they took my option and I started this year with them. And then now I ended up getting a, a move to a club in the league above in the national league, the fifth tier. Um, so now I'm just, I'm happy to be in full-time football um, and 
and I'm enjoying it. So that's basically, I know it's a little longer, but that was, that was quite the journey the last year or so. Good ball on, by the way. Mm-hmm. Great ball. Oh, yeah, no, no worries. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to have to have something else. <laughs> Oh, hey, Coach Bo, this kind of goes back to what we were mentioned about last time we were talking about, but, you know, seeing guys continuing their playing careers after Dartmouth, and that has to be such a big thing for you to go to recruits and say, yeah, not only can you play here, great, get a great education, play high-quality soccer, but also have a chance to play at the next level. Yeah, no, I think that's, uh, you know, one thing that's awesome, you know, is that, uh, you know, you can kind of, you know, get, uh, you know, the best of both worlds, uh, you know, here at Dartmouth, you know, you're going to graduate with a degree that, you know, may lead you to, uh, you know, Wall Street, like, uh, like Ema, you know what I mean, but you're also going to play at a highest level where, you know, you're going to have an opportunity to, uh, you know, play, uh, you know, if those, uh, you know, opportunities are there. I think, you know, watching this game here, I think what is it, Justin, uh, Duvier, Wyatt, Noah, uh, Dan Alak, right? I think uh, guys that have gone on and, uh, you know, have played, uh, you know, after, uh, you know, their time here at Dartmouth. And I think that's, uh, you know, the beauty of, uh, you know, us here at Dartmouth is well, we're unique, uh, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, developing guys or having guys go on, uh, you know, to play, uh, you know, after their time here at Dartmouth is done. So, uh, you know, it's something that we're proud of. We're proud of these guys, uh, but we're just as proud as, uh, you know, of guys that have gone on and, uh, like I said, have found different areas avenues to uh you know start their careers as well uh you know and things so it is it's it's a unique situation but it's a it's a real real cool environment to know that you're coaching kids that are going to be uh you know the best in their chosen field or going to have that opportunity to play uh you know even after as we uh, continue along here big green classic 1-1 our score number 24 seattle dartmouth going at it big green putting some pressure on here as uh, we get close to the end oh, of, the, uh, of the second half. <laughs> <laughs> so close. <laughs> you know, one of the things I did want to uh, ask you guys about, since, you know, all three of you uh, have had experience playing in the NCAA tournament, you know, there are so many guys who play this game that, you know, never get an, an opportunity to play in the postseason, but you guys have ha- had plenty of great memorable moments. We talked about this season in particular beating St. Francis at home. Um, can you speak to, you know, what that environment is like playing in a NCAA playoff game and just kind of the emotions that go along with it? Because again, not too many people have had that opportunity like you guys have had. For Seattle, they are in the white jersey. Um, all right. Yeah. Well, all right, you can go, Justin. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's basically just obviously we're going to go home, so it's it, it creates that that final mentality. And, and, and like we alluded to earlier, it's that's basically our mentality going into every game, especially Ivy League, where, like Noah said, you know, you lose two games and you're out of the, the race to win the league. So the, in terms of – the type of game, it was a game where, you know, those are the games we're used to, you know, having to go in and literally have to get the win in order to stay in it. So I think from that perspective, it wasn't anything new, but it there definitely was a, a slightly different feel um, because you knew you're fighting for something bigger, which is a national championship. Um, and, you know, we, we knew that, and I think we carried that mentality into every, every NCAA game and, and we, you know, faced some really good opposition in the tournament. Um, and I think it, it gave us all really good exposure. But there was a def- there's definitely a different feel. But we were all very pumped and excited for those games and, and looked forward to them. And Greer comes over to Tyler John. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, they do definitely have a different air, too, especially because the weather starts to get cold, too. And it's just like uh, it feels like a proper – Feels like I don't know. I wouldn't say like a European match, but it's like it feels like a cup game that you watch on TV. Like it's super. I, I personally loved it. It was super fun. I also was like the only team that actually liked the balls they made us use for those games. <laughs> Everybody trash. else hated them. I like the NCAA. So ball. trash. You ping those things. They were so fun. Um, I love the NCAA tournament. Those were my favorite games every year, except the year yeah. that we got whacked by Syracuse in the snow. But <laughs> fun. Different. Now was the 2016 yeah. season? Was that it? Was that the infamous snow game, Noah? Yeah, yeah, yeah that was yeah. this year or this season that we're watching right here. 
Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Yima, uh, your experience playing in an NCAA tournament game? Yeah, they're they're so crazy fun. Um, I think look, I, I like look back for, specifically to I you know although we didn't get the results on these two, but against Syracuse, my the year before uh, this season, so my sophomore year. Um, and then what was it? Uh, UNH my uh, senior year. Like just like when I think back, like on my soccer career, like two of the most fun games I've ever been a part of. Um, it's just like the, I, everyone's just it's just like everyone's like locked in. Like people are pinging the ball. Like everyone's trying to play the best soccer possible. Like you're doing whatever it takes to win. Um, it's like it's literally like it's one of those things, right? Like for some people, like it could be the final game of your career, right? You've been playing for 20 years, and like it boils down to like this one moment. So I think like because of that, like the games are just like so cre- like they're fun. They're so fun. Um, and I think it was just like great to be in like I don't know a, a program that like like that's like that was like the like goal slash expectation, right? Is that like you're going to make it to the NCAA tournament? And you're going to do your best like to make a a run in that um and so just like being a part of that overall environment was just incredible um yeah truly incredible justin is that a dva juggling over someone right there yeah yeah it's a dva kind of dribble seven guys yeah classic (laughs) (laughs) and we're inching closer again not to uh spoil here but we are inching closer to uh to the big goal here Of course, oh, two, of our, two out of our three of yeah, our panel were in on the Justin. Go out and Seattle with a corner kick. Only their second of the evening, and this will come from the far side. Now, do you guys are, now? Can you from watching this? Can you guys see if there's a different pace of play going on here? Is there a little bit more pressing? What, what are you guys noticing here as we get to kind of the the nitty gritty here, the final ten minutes or so? I think we were able to um, to gain a little bit more possession this half um, and actually settle on the ball a little bit better. Um, like like you said, you haven't seen them in these positions that often this half, So and even like set pieces. So I think we did well to stay compact um, and, and stick to the game plan and eventually obviously get the result. So. I agree. I think the pressure in this game from the front, like third or four, was, in the second half was super good. Um, yeah. Just keeping them on their toes. Um but I think, like, overall, you just, like, well, this half versus the second half is just, like, much better from from, from us. I think, like, when you just, like, think about like, where the ball is, like, most, for most of this half, it's been in, on their half of the field. So, um, obvious, obvious improvements there. I agree. Our defensive shape was a lot better, too, when we were conceding the play because they were kind of playing through us a little bit in the first half. But yeah. we're yeah. very solid locked in when we were conceding the play in this half. I am going to let you guys kind of talk through it here as we uh, as we inch closer we to the eventual game winner. So I'm going to let you guys just take it over here. Douse bombs in the throw. Yeah, he's got a slingshot. Love man. that. <laughs> got nice to freaking toss. The win ball. the second ball. Oh, Get some help from the referee. referee. Perfect. No, this isn't it. This isn't it, though. What a uh, shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Good strike, though. Like no. said, good idea, right? My roommate. <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, that's when you was growing your hair up, no? It was. I haven't noticed, I haven't noticed how long his hair was. That's right. <laughs> it looks so cool on the field, but I hated it off the field. It was like, you could like find yourself when I was watching that film, but it was so annoying otherwise. I'm thinking about doing it again. So by the time I can play again, I'll have long hair. Good so, um, one by Dan Alak. No, is that you? No, I was Greer. Yeah, that's where it starts. Yeah, yeah, like pressing the daylight out of them. Yeah. yeah. Well done by Danilak. Good team press right yeah. there. I think we're just on top of like just every second ball, yeah. every third ball, you know what I mean? Staying really solid. Good, Justin? <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> really solid. <laughs> I just to score the goals, man. Let's Here see we go. Up. Oh, great. Nice. Good link. Up, eh? Yeah. Well, well, if you think about it, all this leads to the goal. So, you know, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do that. Could, could have happened differently. Uh-oh. Hold on. My whole screen just froze also. I can't. Seattle, though, with it. Moving left to right in the Dartmouth end. Oh, my God. All right. Here we go. Good, Jimbo. Hold on. As Rolden was 
<laughs> can you guys hear me? Okay. Yep. Yeah, you can hear me. My wi fi cut out there for. That would have been unfortunate. Oh, good old Cali. Perfect. Good pump by James. Let's see how, how I do here. <laughs> Don't even challenge that shit. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, this Ooh, Greer. Good, good work, but oh, well, Greer ends up getting back and winning it. Here we go. I feel good about this moment. Noah, Justin. Oh, I, think you, I think I'm right there. I think you, you slot that, you know. <laughs> I think that was all you. Know. <laughs> I think you, you should pass that, bro. You should pass that. <laughs> Basically, when I turned, I was like, oh, Justin kid's pretty fast. I'll just put it in his stride. <laughs> and then he made up about I five like guys. I was, somebody in a I second. was two of my groin trying to get that first tuck. That was a... <laughs> yeah, well, you're welcome. <laughs> set you up, so. <laughs> that was a good goal. Good ball by now. It's a great Good finish. Good roomy, good roomy connection there. Yeah, that's right there. Yeah. We had that all year this year. This, this I, year. I, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't have done that for you, you modest sky. Though. No, obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Dude, you should just pass it an easy path, bro. <laughs> I think our first like three or four goals between us this season, Justin and I had, were all like scored or assisted by each other. That's funny because he played the ball to me and like on the Princeton goal too. I think like yeah, you know? Princeton Holy Cross. Yeah. Dynamic duo. Roomy connection, man. Can say? Yeah. Yeah. Gonna say? I was well, going to say, no, is that something like you guys could just read each other's minds by the end of the season? <laughs> it was, uh, how did that work? You know, we grew up in really similar places, Petaluma. And <laughs> 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 kind of meant to be, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly a big goal again. Dartmouth was down 1-0 early on in this game, but now they've taken a 2-1 uh, a lead and what would almost be poetic justice, of course, from the previous season where Seattle came away with a with a two one uh, win, uh, but I do want to make sure we get this in, guys, before we uh, we run out of time here. Um, just kind of looking back at your experience as a whole, we've talked about some great memories. We talked about this season and and what the program uh, you know has done for you guys. But when you kind of step back and you kind of look at it from afar and maybe watching this game, I mean, what has those four seasons for you guys meant to you. And just now that you've kind of been able to kind of look back at it from an, an alum standpoint, what, what has this experience meant for you guys? And uh, Yima, why don't you, you start us off? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I, I guess I, Dharma, Dharma soccer is probably like the best, one of the best things that's happened to me. It's not like the best thing that's happened to me. Like just like being a part of this group, this team has been like, just like fundamental, like in, in like my growth development, like however you want to put it. Um, I think, I don't know, it's just like the small things, right? Like just like being able to like, after like a hard day of class, just being, being able to like go to the locker room and just like banter with the, with the boys oh. before practice or like go into like the training room and just like hang out and like all the small moments off the field, right? Um, there's just like everything about the experience was just so fun, like so fun, like so good, like learned just learned a ton um and again i think like we, we talked about this but like some of these guys are some of my closest friends to today right so i i think i think yeah loved it absolutely loved it like wouldn't do it i need i wouldn't have it any other way like i think coming to Denver was the best decision i made um so yeah six minutes to play I would agree with that. I miss my teammates every day like they this team was by far and away the most fun group of guys i've ever met in my life um yeah just like all the stories of like on and off the field and just like the stuff we've done. I, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I miss it so much all the time. Like I miss just walking out on the field on like a Wednesday afternoon, just in the fall, like seeing the leaves changing colors, training, like getting prepared for the game. Like, Oh, it was the best. It was the best. It doesn't get much better than that, honestly. Yeah, I, I would totally agree uh, with those two. Just it, no matter how bad of a day you were having, honestly, like like the banter never stopped with 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 this group. Um, <laughs> no matter how bad of a day you might have had in class or or whatever was going on in your life, um, it, it, once you left class and headed down to the locker room for training, it was like all that stuff kind of just like not necessarily disappeared, but almost took a backseat because it's like instantly someone's making you laugh instantly uh yeah yeah you're, you're, you're just you know vibing to the music and or joking about how terrible somebody's music is or whatever it may be um you know i think it, it was definitely something special we were all like a family we still are 
um, most of us still stay very much in contact. Um, you know, even us three, we stay in contact every so often, despite, you know, the different time zones and our different schedules and, and career paths. But we, we've all gained like lifelong friends um, just from that three and a half, four year, um, you know, adventure at Dartmouth. And, and I will always forever be thankful for every single one of my teammates there and how easy they made the transition from, you know, where I was coming from to Dartmouth, you know, academically, athletically, um, socially and things like that. So I, I honestly, like Yima said, it was one of the, you know, the best three, four years of my life really in terms of meeting new people and, and growing not only as a soccer player, but as a person. So. Coach, I imagine uh, everything that you're hearing right now from these guys is what you would hope you these your players would experience when everything's all said and done at Dartmouth, correct? Yeah, that's that's why you come, you know, to uh, to a school like Dartmouth, and uh, you know, I think it is. It's a special place. Uh, you know, I, I was when I came here for my uh, you know interview. Uh, you know, Yima was one of the guys that was in the group that we met with the, with the players, and uh, you know, right away, um, you know, I could start to sense the the, the passion, uh, you know, that they had all had, uh, you know, for uh, for the program and for the the school in general. And so, uh, you know, for me, that's uh, you know the the kind of experience that. Uh, you know, we're trying to, you know, make sure all of our guys, uh, you know, that graduate, uh, you know, have here at Dartmouth is just an experience of uh, meeting people that, you know, have literally changed their lives, uh, you know, for uh, for the better and, uh, you know, making relationships that are going to last, uh, you know, a lifetime and things. And, uh, you know, I think those are, you know, really, really what makes, uh, you know, the job that I do here so enjoyable, uh, you know, because we have that opportunity each and every day to, uh, you know, impact these kids' lives in a positive way. So coming down to the final two minutes and 30 seconds here, Dartmouth trying to hang on for a 2-1 win over 24th-ranked Seattle and what has certainly been old Dartmouth here uh, in the second half. Again, the uh, Big Green uh, playing just their second home game of this uh, 2016 season that we're watching. But, of course, uh, playing a, a really tough non-conference slate uh, coming in. And, uh Coach, I guess I'll ask you here for the final couple of minutes, just kind of what, uh, you know, what the future looks like here for the program as you guys go into winter session. I know obviously things are very fluid on campus right now, but just kind of what you're looking ahead for the next few months and what uh, players are looking ahead uh, here on the off season. Yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, like you said earlier, we, uh, you know, just finished up our uh, the fall term, uh, you know, on Friday as far as playing and guys will start to finish up classes and finals and things like that after Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, for us, it's, uh, you know, more recruiting. Uh, you know, we're, we're kind of heavy on, the, you know, the recruiting trail right now, even though it's all, uh, you know, virtual uh you know right now so uh you know just trying to uh you know finish up our uh you know our 2022 uh you know class uh you know and things and then get prepared for uh you know the guys that are going to be on uh you know in the winter and uh you know we're trying to navigate through that just a little bit from the news uh you know that we got last week as far as uh you know us not being able to compete uh you know in the in the spring uh you know so we're uh trying to finalize who's going to be on in the winter term to uh you know be able to train and things and you know just uh you know, keeping uh, everybody engaged right now. I mean, we do a lot of, uh, you know, virtual things with the, with the team. Oh, wow. Uh, we do a lot of virtual things with the, with the team right now, and we'll continue that, uh, you know, just to, uh, you know, keep the, keep the group engaged. Um, and then trying to also help the, the seniors, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, may have kicked their last ball here at Dartmouth and, you know, figuring out, uh, you know, kind of next steps, uh, you know, for those guys and things. So, uh, but we're in, a, we're in a good place. I mean, given the, you know, the situation that we're in, uh, you know, our guys are motivated. I think it goes back to this whole conversation is just the culture here at Dartmouth is in a, in a great place. And, uh, you know, I think the guys here, uh, you know, know that essentially at some point we're going to all play again together. And, uh, you know, we just need to make sure that, uh, you know, we're doing everything that we can do right now so that when we do get back together, we're, uh, we're ready to go. Final few seconds here on this one is the big green again up 2-1. And that is uh, all they wrote as the Dartmouth big green collect the victory. They were down 1-0 early on in this one, but they come back for a 2-1 victory here uh, in 2016. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, joining us here on Big Green Classic. Certainly fun to 
go down memory lane and hopefully it was for you guys as well a uh, big thank you to uh Yima Asom, also Justin Denawa, and also Noah Piravicini, and head coach Bo Oshani. Thanks, guys, so much for joining us, and uh, go Big Green. Thank you again. Thanks, Brett. Thank you. Thank Thank you, you, Brett. Uh, All right, and thank you, Big Green Sports fans. We'll talk to you for one more edition of Big Green Sports Classic next week. Until then, stay healthy, stay safe. Thanks to Ben Myers. I'm Brett Franklin. Have a great night, everybody.